The input view on the venue shows you an overview of your selected channel. Now some of this stuff may seem a little obvious, but we'll skim over it anyway. At the top, you have the name of the channel. You can double click here to rename the channel. Below that, you have a box that tells you where that channel is patched to. You can click here and it takes you to the patch bay where you can change your patch if you need to. To the right, you have a plus and a minus button. This selects the next or the previous channel. To the right of that, you have a folder. If you click here, you have channel presets. These presets include everything except for your inserts and your patch setting. So this is gain, EQ, compression, gating, all that stuff, even the name of the channel. Now moving down to the bottom left, you have your meter, which is pretty obvious, your fader, and then you have phantom power, which is your 48 volt button here. Below this, you have a pad. The pad is a 20 dB pad. It doesn't say this, but that's good to know. Below this, you have a guess button. Now you might be guessing what the guess button means. Uh, this guesses your gain. So if you hold this button down, it's kind of an auto gain setting thing. Uh, not something that I use very often, but hey, you can use it if you want. Below this, you have your gain setting. And then if you drop down, you have delay. Uh, delay is useful for delaying the channel. You might use it on video if you have a lip sync problem and you need to delay the audio to line up with the video. Um, it's also useful if you're trying to time align different instruments or different mics on the same instrument. Uh, so you can turn that on here and set your delay. You can change the units in your options menu. Below this you have your high pass filter. You can turn that on here and set your frequency. And then to the left you have your solo and mute buttons, which are pretty self-explanatory. Then we'll jump back up here, you have your bus assigns. Your bus assigns is where you assign that channel to either the main output or any buses or subgroups. You can select them here and then the stereo pan uh, means that your pan pans them between the left and right if you're using stereo groups. You have your direct out below this, you turn it on here you click here and it'll take you to your patch bay where you can assign the direct output. Now you'll notice down here on the bottom left hand corner you have a direct out section when you're in the patch bay view and this is where you can set your level. This is the only place you can set your gain for your direct out so that's important to remember. Go back to the input view. Below this you have your pan. So again that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, on a lot of this stuff you can right click on it and reset it to its default setting. So if you right click on this, you can reset your fader to zero. Um, if you right click on your gain, it resets it to plus 10, which is default. So that's a good little tip to remember. Moving on to the right, you have your aux send section. You can turn the aux on, and you can also make it pre-fader here. If it's off, then it's post-fader. You can also turn the auxes on and off by pushing in the knob on the control surface. To the right of this, you have your EQ section. Uh, you have the EQ in button, which just turns EQ on and off. You have your analog button, which basically just switches modes. The top and bottom bands become shelving, and that's about all it does. So when you click your EQ or make a change with the knobs, the display to the right will show you your EQ. You can also click and drag the EQ around make changes this way or using the knobs here or the knobs on the actual control surface. You can right click in the EQ area and reset the EQ, copy the EQ or paste an EQ if you already copied one. Now down to the bottom right here you have your compressor and limiter. When you click on this it displays it in the display area. Uh, it will also display it if you turn a knob, just like on the EQ, and the gate works the same way. You have your on and off button here, and then all of your settings. So as you change things, you'll see on the graph the effect. Change your knee, you see it gets soft or hard. To the right of the compressor and limiter, you'll see a compressor limiter sidechain section. This lets you filter your sidechain of your compressor and limiter. Now a sidechain is just what triggers the compressor. It's not actually what you're hearing, it's just the trigger for the compressor. So you can filter out high frequencies and low frequencies so that they won't trigger the compressor to compress. You have to turn this on by hitting key in, turn on the filter, and you can filter out your low frequencies. 
so that a low frequency is not going to trigger a compressor to compress the signal. You can do the same with your high frequencies. You can also click here to listen. If you click here to listen, it doesn't listen in the main output of the console, which would normally be your sound system. It only listens in the monitor out or the headphone out. Below this, you have your expander or gate. You can turn it on here. And again, it shows you the display of what you're doing. Turn that off. To the right of the gate, you'll notice an expander gate sidechain section. Here, you can filter your sidechain of your gate. This is very useful on things like drums, where you don't want your cymbals to open your kick drum mic or your snare drum mic. So if you filter the sidechain, which is just the trigger for the gate, then you can keep the cymbals from opening other mics that they shouldn't be opening. So to do this, first thing you would do is turn your key on, turn on the high frequency filter, and then drag it down. If you're using a kick drum, you can drag it all the way down to around 100 hertz. And this way, the snare and the cymbals won't trigger the kick drum gate to open. And in the top right section, you have some useful buttons here. You have input direct. If you have input direct on, that means that you are hearing exactly what's coming into that preamp. You're not hearing any EQ, any compression, any gating, any plugins, anything. It's just the clean signal. Now, this is really useful for troubleshooting. If something just sounds weird to you and you're not sure if you're making it sound weird or if it sounds weird from the source, try input direct and you can hear just a clean signal. Uh, also be aware that if you have the signal turned way down with a compressor and you hit input direct, it's going to get really loud. So uh, don't do anything stupid there. And also don't forget to turn that off. Um, if you turn it on, it flashes at you and it also flashes on the control surface letting you know that it's on so that you're not turning knobs and can't figure out why something won't work later. To the right of this, you have your Dynamics Pre-EQ button. This means that your Dynamics, your compressor and your gate, uh, are before the EQ. So if you make EQ changes, it doesn't affect your compressor or your gate. This is really good to know. Uh, if you want your EQ changes to affect your compressor and gate, turn that off. This might be useful in a kick drum. You're probably going to boost some low end, and you'd want that boost to help trigger a gate. So you would want your dynamics to be after your EQ, so that EQ would trigger the gate to open. So you'd want that light off. Below this, you have your insert section. The first one is your hardware insert. If you click this, you can then go to your patch bay and do an analog insert using your front of house rack. Turn that back off. And below this, you have your software inserts. And these are the plugins that you insert on your plugin rack. You can click here, and it'll take you to your plugin rack where you can insert plugins. You can also click to the right and choose a plugin that's already in the plugin rack. Now, it has to already be in the rack. You can't assign a plugin that's not already assigned to the rack. You can also click the listen button if you want to listen to the side chain in your headphones or your monitor output. Now that this, again, will not let you hear it in your PA. Below this, you can choose an external key for your gate if you want to. You can say self, which would be the channel that you're working on, or you can choose another channel to trigger the gate to open for this channel. So an example might be if you have two kick drum mics, and maybe you're having a hard time getting one of them to gate properly, but the other one's getting fine. Well, you can take the channel that you're having a hard time with and key it off of the channel that's working fine, and then that channel will trigger both channels to open. Now we'll drop down to the bottom of the screen. You have all of your input channels here, so you can see the faders and their positions, and you can also see the meters. You can click and drag the fader, and it actually changes the volume. You can change to the second make of faders here if you have more than 48 input channels. And another useful thing is if you're using VCAs and the channel is assigned to a VCA, you can see the effect of the VCA. If I push this fader up, you'll see a little red ghost fader down at the bottom. That's telling you that there's a VCA that has that fader effectively turned all the way down. This can be a red flag. If you're not hearing any audio and you look on your input section and you see the little red faders all at the bottom, then that means you probably have a VCA that's turned all the way down somewhere. So you need to look for that and turn it up. In the bottom right section of the screen, you have a solo clear button, which just clears any solos that you have going on. Uh, you have an assign button, which lets you assign channels to a mute group. 
To assign channels to a mute group, press the Assign button, select the mute group that you want to assign, and then select the channels that you want in that mute group. If you press Assign again, those are now stored. So when you mute the group, it will mute the channels. You can also disable mute groups by clicking Disable. And it tells you in the bottom that mute groups are disabled.